Hi, this is Jeff, engineer with Borderland Network Security. And in this video, we're going to protect a machine with the Aperture Backup and Disaster Recovery product. We have our core already set up as we have here, and we're going to install an agent on a machine that we wish to be protected. Now, before we install that agent, we want to verify, of course, that we're installing it on a machine that meets the minimum requirements. Those requirements are a Windows machine. It can be either 32 or 64 bit, and that can be Windows XP, Vista, 7, Server 2003, Server 2008, and Server 2008 R2. And we do support Linux. So there's a number of flavors of Linux, Red Hat, CentOS, Ubuntu, and SUSE Linux, which are also all supported in 32 and 64 bit flavors. Uh, you can also install it on those, whether it's a physical or a virtual environment, it's not going to matter. Uh, there's full support for the VMware, for Hyper-V and Citrix. So let's go ahead and just get right into installing that. Uh, this machine, Archon 1, happens to be my core, and I'm going to install the agent on Archon 2. So here with Archon 2, I'll go ahead and I'm going to launch the installer that I've pre-downloaded. Okay, so from the installer, we're going to go ahead and next pass the welcome. We'll of course agree here to the licensing agreement and click Next. Now on this particular installation, since I have previously had an Aperture product on this machine, the prerequisites are already installed. However, in most instances, you would need to install the prerequisites here. Um, depending on your machine and what software is there, there could be uh, just a couple to several uh, five or six prerequisites, and you would just uh, click a button to install prerequisites, and it would take a moment. For me, I, I uh, already have them installed, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. Now here on the installation options page, I can change the destination folder where I wish the uh, uh, agent to reside. I'm just going to leave it in the standard spot and I'm going to leave my port number as 8006 because when I installed the core, I still left the 8006 and I want to make sure that both the core and the agent are communicating across the same port. If you are going to customize it, you need to make sure that you customize it on both. And here we begin with the uh, installation extraction where it's preparing the files to be installed. This is going to of course copy over a number of files, all of which are going to be needed and used for the integration to applications. Uh, depending if you have, for instance, SQL or Exchange or SharePoint installed on the server, uh, all these files are going to be able to interact with those applications to pull the appropriate information and send it back to the core while still allowing the core then to tie into that information to be able to pull out individual files without having to do a full restoration. With the installation complete, you'll notice that we must restart the system, and this is a requirement before we can actually attach it and function properly. So before adding this to the core, I'm going to go ahead and click Finish, which is going to reboot this system, and we'll get started right when it comes back. Now that our machine has been rebooted, we can click over here to Archon 1, which is our core. And on our core, we're going to want to tell it to protect a machine. And here, we're going to tell it the host name, which is the machine that we're protecting. And we need to provide credentials, that way it can connect to that machine. If you are on a domain, you want to specify the domain name, and then of course do slash username. I'm going to hit connect, and it's going to cause an attempt to connect out to that server. And once it connects, it's going to bring up a dialog page. If you were to have an issue connecting, it may be because the agent on the other machine has yet to actually start, because it would be important to note after the reboot, the service doesn't start immediately. It does have a delayed start so as not to impact the production machine and the other services which are already installed. Uh, that you're wanting to run. So once this comes up, I'm presented with my display name and by default it's the IP or whatever I type to connect to that machine. I'd like to change it uh, and put in something other than the IP. I know the machine as Archon 2. So that's what I'm going to put it in. And I want to connect into repository 1. I don't want an encryption key right now 
But I, but I do want to initially pause protection because I don't want any snapshots to immediately begin. I want to be able to look at the machine before it starts. And then I do want to protect both the volumes that are on the machine, the pre-built uh, system reserved and the C drive. And I think for me, the defaults of 60 minutes peak and 60 minute weekends are okay, but I, I want to change it because on weekends, I'm not that concerned. So I want to increase my weekends to 120 minutes because people really don't change anything on the weekends. And I want to apply this to both volumes. So I'll check the apply to both volumes and hit okay. And you'll notice the change has occurred. And now I'm just going to hit protect. And once that's added, I'm taken back to the main home page of my core console here. And now I can see under protected machines that I have Archon 2 with a green light. The green light just means that the machine is connected and on. And I can see a quick snapshot view of that it. it's on repository one, that there's no snapshots yet been performed. There are of course no recovery points because it's never done a snapshot and it's not using any space. If I want to see further details about that machine, I can just click right on Archon 2 and it's going to change the page to look specifically at that one machine. With that up, I can see again here my protection information down at the bottom and a little bit more information here. And it's not very populated because nothing's run on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and kick off a, a snapshot. I'm going to force it. And since I've never done a base image, I'm going to start with the base image. And I can see here that it has been queued. And I can look at that information on the Events tab. So let's go over there. Here on the Events tab, at the very top, I have my transfer volumes. You can see that it's in progress. I want to see more information, so I can either click the Details option here, or for a quick snapshot view, I can just expand it down, and it tells me how long it's been running for, and that it's in progress, uh, and that it's preparing the snapshot. And in this phase, what it's actually doing is it's looking at all the files that are on the machine and determining what files it needs to back up. But since it's the base image, it's going to, of course, grab all the files. So it's going to now transfer all of the information over. And once that completes, I'll have a full, complete, and base snapshot. And once this job finishes, I'm going to have a complete base image on my core server here of the backup for Archon 2. And if I were to ever need to recall any files, uh, I would be able to do that from the base image or from any of the incrementals that happen every hour or every 120 minutes on the weekends as I have set it up. So I hope this quick little video has been instructive and informative, helping you to add a protected machine to your core. If you have any questions or any other concerns, uh, I'd be more than happy to work with you or one of my other colleagues to answer those questions. You can reach us here at Borderland Network Security, 760-736-8100. Thanks a lot and have a great day.